Hi everybody, it's fall. We're here in the United States of America, Portland, Oregon, where I teach uh, at Multnomah University. It's been a good semester. Uh, this is, by the way, our puppy, Mr. Bingley. We kind of think he looks like Mr. Bingley from Pride and Prejudice. Uh, it's been great to be back teaching students again, but man, it was hard to leave France. It was so hard. If, if you're a mom and you've had a baby, or maybe you've had a new puppy or something, you know when you leave something that's kind of vulnerable and helpless and needs attention, uh, that's definitely how I felt when we left a couple months ago. Yeah, it's a big house and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And so to leave it, uh, to leave it empty is a very frightening thing. Now we were scared of several things going wrong while we were gone. Clearly it's possible uh, that uh, thieves could come in and, and steal or take stuff. Uh, we're more worried about rain coming in. Yeah, fall, rain. Yeah, there's lots mm -hmm. of rain and there's all kinds of holes in the roof and so yes. We had to go up there and try to, uh, you know, put out buckets because if, if the rain's gone for, if we're gone for three months, you can only imagine how much rain could potentially get in there. Now, now we did try and safeguard that a little bit with some tarps and buckets and, and whatnot, yeah. but we are terribly curious to know how it's going up there. There's also other reasons we want to get back really badly. For one thing, as the temperature drops, there's maybe a mile or two mile of pipes over the yard and throughout the house. We don't want those pipes to burst as the temperature gets down. So we got to get there and turn on the, the chaudier, the, the boiler. Yeah, it's chaudier. Um, and uh, make sure that the pipes don't burst. But also we have a big project plan for the next couple months. We do. So we potentially have students coming to visit us in the spring. And we still don't have a kitchen other than our little turret kitchen. So that is not going to work well. So we have a big project at Christmas, Lord willing, that we can get done and accomplished. Yeah, let's take a look at it. So this is our top-down view of the whole kitchen itself. You can see it has lots of little nooks and crannies and usual little spots here and there. But when you walk in here, you'll see that there's beautiful windows with lovely light coming through. And that's what's really special about this basement kitchen. When you come around the corner there, when you first walk in, I'm hoping to have a piece of furniture maybe right in this spot. Or as you saw in that last picture, some kind of maybe built-in cabinetry. We'll see what the prices are looking like. This is the 1980s kitchen that they used when it was a bed and breakfast, correct? It is, yeah. catering kitchen. Mm -hmm. So there's this odd little counter bit there. Um, that's gonna be sort of one of our main elevations where all those wires are on the floor. I'm hoping to also put an island there, which is what they probably had there originally. Um, this gives you a bit of an idea. So most of our appliances are gonna go that on that back wall because that's where all the electrical is right now. And it's cheaper to stick with where electrical is now than try to rearrange everything in the room. When you go over to the left side, you'll see there's a door open. That was probably their original cooler uh, that the 1980s caterers did. Yeah, it's a walk-in freezer. It's still good, but it's kind of damp, so we're not going to yeah. use it probably. No, not right now. Someday no. it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. On this back wall, I'm wanting to do that whole um, washing dishes station. Again, there's lots of water points on this wall, so hopefully we can uh, utilize that. Um, as we come around, this back wall over here is kind of unusual because there's so many ins and outs. So we'll see how cabinetry fits in here and there. Maybe there's going to be some standing alone furniture pieces and maybe some will be built in. We'll find out. The pictures that I had drawn there are not real by any stretch of the imagination. Um, they're just a depiction of what possibly could go there. Um, I may not have that kind of look of cabinets. I may not have that kind of island. Um, it just gives me the place markers for where furniture or um, a p an appliance is going to go or something like that. So don't yeah. think it's going to look like that. <laughs> Lots of wires to cover, you'll notice too. It'll be interesting to see how we figure that all out. There is. We'll see how much of the tile stays and how much doesn't. But this is not the only kitchen. It's true. Across, this is the original. It is. Across the hall, this is the old kitchen, which I think is just charming as anything. Right in the middle there, what I'm dreaming about is having a beautiful wood table where kids can come around and hang out. Maybe the fireplace will work one day, but I think this will be just the most charming uh, little space for us to all hang out um, in general. There's one little built-in cabinet in here that looks really dingy, I realize, but you just wait and see. It's going to look adorable. One cool thing is we have a bread oven in the corner. They would have had the wood down there. I'm super excited about this. This is super popular nowadays we could do make your own pizzas in here i know i can't wait i think it's completely doable uh it's a bit dusty but i think i i, I want to try it as long as the chimney works we're gonna be setting. i know so we'll have to get the chimney man out yeah and uh and see if we can't get this this going but it's a beautiful and this massive massive original fireplace it is also made out of tufo stone so it is just lovely it looks like obviously there had been a fire in there 
Um, so I kind of look forward to it. Then there's this really cute little room that we're going to go in over to the left over here. Yeah, but you here, can see this is the rest of the room. Yeah, we're taking a look at it. By the way, the uh, the, the roof above us, it's uh, steel girders, which is one of the first times, just when they were starting to do that, and mm -hmm. twigs on I top know. of that. We'll have to show you that next Crazy. time. Yeah. It is. It's bizarre. Uh, so there's this little room. You go in here. I suspect it's where they maybe wash vegetables or I don't know, but I think it's fantastic. It's definitely going to be Mr. Bingley's toe washing a spot or something yeah. like that there's a little water on the side uh the owner said it he had never seen it work but i think it's adorable in here yeah it's not too hard to get water to a place this window is going to need to be replaced it, there's a lot of air that comes through it's pretty, pretty there rotten. is but you know what you can see beautiful roses out the window yeah uh, which i think you're going to see in but a minute this and room has tons of potential it does and that stone sink is incredible yeah here we're going to look out there it's lovely there you go i can't wait so a couple of really important reasons why we want to get back to the Chateau, why we're really hoping they're going to let us into the country. Um, this next week is going to be super interesting. Will we get in? And what will we find when we get in? Will there be trees falling? Will there be big pools of water? Right now you're looking at, again, the kitchen. And uh, the other day I came in there and we noticed that there was a big, long lake of water and it had been seeping from this wall. Originally I was worried that it might be a pipe or something that had broken, but no, it was just coming in from outside. So I went up to the roof to try to track it down um, and started to discover that there's a really impressive system of collecting rainwater on the chateau. All the way around uh, the roof, you have these huge wide gutters, eaves, troughs, covered by lead, and they lead down into six downspouts, evenly spaced around the building. So the water runs down the downspouts. Here on the back, you know, when it gets to the terrace, it runs across a little bit of a, um, a gutter, a, cha a channel, a channel. Uh, and then it comes underneath the stone fence and down to the ground. And this is where it was pooling. And so we started pulling out some foliage, trying to figure out why it wasn't draining. And we found that, in fact, there's a shaft. And there's actually a number of them around the property. We think that they all connect. And then they run into the original cistern. And there's actually a well, which may predate the, the chateau. Very cool. So here we're walking uh, underneath the veranda. And, and you can see the original well, which was still in use a couple of years ago. We'd love to get it working again. But we want to get back and make sure there's not huge puddles of water all over the place. Make sure everything's safe. So it all goes down next Friday. We're going to get on a plane. We're going to go to London. Uh, we've looked at the internet really carefully. The France website, the UK websites. So we're trying to do everything legally. We're going to have a couple of COVID tests to make sure we're not spreading the disease. We want to take that seriously. Yeah, uh, on paper, it looks like it's going to work. Uh, fly to London get on the train, I take the train from uh, Heathrow to uh, uh, Central Paris and then rent a car from there. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated, watch for the next video, which will be back to France. Did we, did we get back? Did we make it? Yeah. yeah. But I uh, appreciate your prayers and uh, that in the meantime. And the next video, hopefully we'll get the kitchen started. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. Yep.